today's guest is, we're going to call him Brad from Orion because that is what he is known as on social media. Brad is also a first form athlete. So if you don't know first form, if you don't know Andy Frisella, um, if you like the side of me, that's like the own everything, you know, take care of your business, tell it like it is that if you like that side of me and you, for some crazy reason, know who I am and don't know who Andy Frisella is recommend checking out Andy Frisella's podcast and socials and all that. But first form is one of the biggest uh, sports supplement companies in the world. And, um, and Brad, our guest today is one of their athletes. So we start off the episode by talking about his experience doing 75 hard, um, which is from Andy Frisella. And it's a challenge that he's going to describe in depth for you. I really liked his perspective on it. Um, I've had mixed feelings, which I'll share in the episode, but I've had some mixed feelings. I, I appreciate 75 hard. I know it's helped a lot of people, but I'll, you know, you'll see as the episode begins, I'll share a little bit of my thoughts behind it. And I, so I really appreciated his perspective on it. Um, now the really cool part of this episode, like if, if, in my opinion, if you're into, uh, the blending of spirituality and science, you're going to like this episode because Brad is a musician and he, he's a curious mind. I'll put it that way. And so he's talking about how he has mimicked the frequencies of the chakras and the pulse of the earth and like put these things into his music. He's yeah, it's really, it's really interesting stuff. He also has, um, a podcast about his music. He has another podcast called the 0% podcast that I was on. Um, he's a great interviewer. You can kind of tell as he's on the episode, you can tell he does podcasting. <laughs> you can just tell when people are, you know, good speakers that way. Um, um, but he has another podcast where he'll share at the end where he explains what he's doing with music, really cool stuff. Um, uh, we'll link in the show notes that his social media, um, and also the 0% podcast, all of that. So yeah, I, I love this kind of stuff. I love people who are willing to explore and see what's possible. And he definitely has that like curious mind. So if you like, uh, spiritual stuff that has to kind of be scientifically backed with some cool backing you're going to like this episode. So we'll go ahead and dive in. Here is Brad from Orion. Okay. So Brad, recently you sent me a link to a song that I so appreciated. I've been listening to it so much. I love it. It was a, a Tom Petty cover that you did and it was cool because you have a video with it. And I think it's like, I'll have to put the link to that. And then, and then it's for everybody um, because it's like the perfect uh, depiction of what we're going to talk about today. And it's okay. this combination of fitness and pushing yourself and doing your 75 hard and your music. And it's, it's a really cool combo because you have this like very strong physical side where you want to push limits and do all that. But then you have this strong spiritual side and like pulling in kind of these spiritual components in the music. And I want to dive into all that today because awesome. it's cool. So let's start with 75 hard. We share okay. your experience with this and sorry, I'm going to cut you off because real quick before you do, I will, I will admit, I love Andy. I love, I mean, I, yeah, like I love how Andy for if anybody doesn't know, he created 75 hard. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, for me, 75 hard, I've had like mixed feelings because on the one hand, I know that could be really, really good for people. On the other hand, I'm like worried that it perpetuates this sense of like fitness has to suck and be hard. And when I'm done, I'm done. I'm just doing this challenge thing, but I have kind of like gotten my, you know, butt handed to me on it because I've seen, a, I've seen a lot right. of good come from it. I've seen it right. really light a fire in people. And so I'm like, okay, dude, this is actually really cool. Cause it's, it is helping a lot of people. So can, first of all, can you explain what it is and then yeah. can you share your experience? Yeah. And actually I like the way that you, you initially kind of looked at that from that perspective. Cause that is a perspective. A lot of, a lot of people can view it at and yeah, he's a flip side perspective and I'll get into that. Um, yeah. so I'll explain what it is, um, for people out there who don't know, it is a 75 day, like, you know, challenge thing, but I don't even like calling it that I like calling it a program because yeah. more or less what you're doing is programming consistency into your life. That's it on the, on the most basic level. Yeah. All you're doing is you're really, you're programming uh, pure consistency and holding yourself to that. So accountability comes directly with that. Um, it's a five task program. So there's five tasks every day that you got to do. And um, they're pretty simple things like drink a gallon of water, read 10 pages of a book. Um, the book's got to be nonfiction or self-help or something along the line, something, you know, that'll help the, the mentality or just learn something new type book. Um, but yeah, simple 10 pages, gallon of water, work out twice a day. One has to be outside and then um, hold to a diet and then no cheat meals or alcohol. 
it's intense. And that's, and that's it. So, but the, so the hardest thing I, that I find, and most people will find when they hop on it is all five every day. Right. Because right, you can right. hit a day where you're like, all right, I didn't drink today. I had a great diet and I worked out two times, but you didn't, you didn't have time to read a book and you didn't even drink but a half gallon of water, you know? So how, right. you know, it's, it's to actually get all that put in is where the word hard comes into play, you know, 75 hard. So for people out there, like right off the bat, they hear, and this is almost me, 75 hard challenge. It's like, how do you beat yourself up hard for 75 days to challenge yourself? And that's the complete like wrong way to actually look at it once you get involved in it, once you start doing it. And, you know, cause that's almost like the, I don't want to call it like a CrossFitters perspective, but it has that, like, you know, you really want to go all out. So is there a 20 day challenge I can do? How about a 30 day? And you see something like 75 day and you're thinking, okay, this is something like that you know, where I can do more days than another person. And again, spiraling off the rails and getting off of what the actual thing is. So um, basically what it is, is it's, it's programming in that mental consistency because um, it's difficult to stay on those five tasks um, every day. You have a job, you have kids, you have um, a lifestyle going on. That lifestyle might involve drinks two nights a week with people. Um, so you have to cut that stuff out or, or involve yourself in a different way. You have to, you know, work around the kids schedules. You got to work around your own schedule, your work schedule to try to get these tasks in five, all five of them every single day. And then another very, um, big time challenge that outdoor workout, because, you know, it's not always nice out and depending on where you live, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm from Ohio. So our weather is actually some of the worst in the uh, United States, as far as we get the, like the shit end of everybody's weather so we're non-stop gray and rain and i saw i always call it like you know fall year round type stuff so you know every now and again it's raining every now and again it's inclement and you got to go out there and you have to just get involved in it because you can't um there's little um stipulations to it like you can't work out in a covered you know environment like under your carport or or inside of a garage you know you got to actually go out in the rain or you know into the woods, into the, into the field, onto a track, even in your own driveway. Uh, you know, uh, Andy, Andy says it's really about just challenging yourself in the consistency factor. So if you want to drag a, a piece of workout equipment, like a elliptical and set it in your driveway and just pound it out there, you can, you know, so there's a flexibility that is involved. And that's what really I found to be um, almost like that's what really got me like to where I realized it was something that was going to work because that's the hard thing, you know, and again, coming at it from the initial perspective, you had like that, le when you get too rigid um, on like a diet or on any program, you tend to hate it and you tend to like, you know, and it works against you after a while. Um, and I actually listened to that podcast you did a while back on your uh, sentiments on like the diets involving uh, bikini um, competition and stuff like that. And it reminded me of my diet involving my wrestling career. <laughs> just like really depriving this, your body like too much. And then you just like, you just want certain food, junk food so bad, like that. It's like, you'd rather have that. You'd pay a hundred dollars just to have a donut or something like that. You know, like it gets to those ridiculous things. And again, that's not good for the mentality that now we're, you know, doing that. So 75 hard, you know, looks like that from initial perspective, but once you get involved, you start to realize you can tool your own diet. Technically you could be on the donut diet on 75 hard, but what you're going to find is, you know, and you know, it's running two workouts a day, especially with 40. Oh yeah. There's a 45 minute minimum timer on those workouts as well. So it's not just a 20 minute jam. It's 45 minutes that gets you committed. Typically at that point, that's, you know, that settles it in, but um, do it again. My point uh, doing that, twice a day, you know, you don't, if you're on the donut diet, you're going to hurt yourself, you know, you're going to need the protein, you're going to need things. So the reality is you got to create a diet tooled for a dual, a two a day workout plan. And it's a rest, it's rest free. That's the hardest challenge. Um, and um, where, you know, it gets challenged a lot from the fitness perspective is saying, how can you have a, a good program without rest, you know? Um, I, there's ways again with the flexibility. What is a workout? You know, it doesn't have to be a bench press 
then one week, you know, squat the next day, you know, if, if it's, if it's a day of yoga, because your body's so beat up from running the day before and doing a lift the day before, then that that's a workout 45 minutes, you know, you go into that. So you got to kind of become flexible on your workout plan. You got to leave your specificity training. I like to call it, you got to kind of leave that and go on to a more general approach to health and fitness. And therein lies how it's going to help a lifestyle in the future. Cause it's like, you know, this is not just a, Hey, I'm 25 and this is my get ripped program. This is, Hey, I'm, I'm 25. Now when I'm 65, I can still almost pretty much do this by taking a walk mm -hmm. and for 45, like, you know, you can create a lifestyle out of this. Um, and with that being the perspective, there's a much more positive and kind of infinite perspective you can take on it now. Um, now I, I want everybody to kind of get that idea out of it to, you know, start, you know, how do you involve it into your life and then adding five task consistency. And then, you know, from there, boom, now we're going to start doing them, some, some things, you know, on it or off it. Yeah. And I appreciate you sh explaining that first of all, and then sharing that perspective of it. And, and I, what I really see, and it's no surprise coming from Andy because he's so, um, you know, tell it like it is like ownership, take care of your crap, like, you know, and so it's, it's very logical coming from him, but what I hear from it is, um, helping you take a look at how you, stick to your commitments that you've made and helping you have to own it. You know, like you've committed sometimes many right. times people commit socially to these things. I'm doing this thing. And they've told a bunch of people about it. And so it can help you see what's going on inside of yourself, what your patterns are when you start making all these commitments and you don't keep them, you know, and I appreciate that side of it. Cause really, truly like a lot of that is like how I live, like just naturally, you know, like maybe right. not the two a days, but you know, very pretty similar. Like I listen to yeah. a book every day when I drive and I right. you know work out every day and I eat healthy right. every day and I don't drink hardly ever. So it's like, I, yeah, I get you'd it. You'd be able you know? to knock it out. You'd be able yeah. to knock it right out. You wouldn't have as much of an issue. I always see, I see certain people that already are basically on a very regimen plan. The trick is now adding this other thing. And then, yeah. so um, patterning is real quick. What One thing that you said, that's huge that right. we're basically 75 hard at, at, right. uh, at the other base levels doing to you by, by creating a new pattern. Um, Cause yeah, that pattern of drinking twice a week and then never reading anything um, other than a Facebook feed or something like that. Let's just go to like a regular person just hang going about their day. They go some social media ingestion, some media mm -hmm. ingestion. Um, none of it is um, by word from somebody even from the past so that, that that's going to affect what we're, what mentality are they going to be on you know yeah. so pattern um, another thing is have do they typically work out once or twice a week three times a week and we're taking up to 14 a week that's such an increase in a pattern so again mm -hmm. that that pattern which is going to lead me to frequency but we'll get into that here in a second yeah. um, that's kind of what it is you're patterning your life you know around these five tasks, but then you realize, you know, a big thing. And this is one thing that I kind of going in die when you dive in something like this, especially if we're real gung ho, like I am about it. And, uh, you, you don't want to make that your life. It's not 70, you know, the whole thing it's 75 hard is how to get these tasks every day. But again, still have your life because you still have to have your time for your, your job, your family, your friends, your, you know, your own self, um, but I'll tell you that, uh, you don't, you don't need extra time for yourself. 75 hard sets aside so much self time mm -hmm. and that's bam. That's the other huge, like I'll put a, you know, star by that too, is setting it. It, it creates time for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you realize that that's the time that typically is taken, um, from you by anything from TV shows, yeah. to other people to anything like indulging on something else. But when you're like out in the woods on a 45 minute workout, you know, you're, you're, you're in your mind, you know, and I, I encourage people to, you know, use music, of course, you know, listen to heck, listen to some from Ryan music while you're out there on your jog, but also every now and again, turn it off, listen to the sound totally. of nature. All right. Let's believe that's going to also lead me right into the same type of yeah, thing. Yeah. Stuff like that.
yeah, let's pivot into that. Cause this stuff is cool that you're into with music. And I, I second that also, sometimes I go intuitive. Sometimes when I'm on my nature walks, I'm like, nope, girl, you need no incoming. Like we go, we're going yeah. full receiver mode with <laughs> source here. Yeah. Um, and, or just right. like hearing birds, hearing my feet hit the ground, like total presence, you know? So yeah, I, I really appreciate that message. And I definitely want to talk about what you're up to with music. So I'll just, I'll let you rip like where, where, you know, let's talk about, I guess, spirituality and how you're roping some of these concepts into the music that you're creating. Yeah. I'll just go with that whole frequency thing. So it's like, you know, let's get into frequency. Like you said, the sounds in nature. So you go out there, your feet hit the ground and you're listening to the birds. All right. They're, they're making noise. They're making natural sound. The winds make a natural sound as it comes through you know, this is, it, it, it's a harmonious, you know, sound, um, you know, it can be chaos, but realistically there's a harmony in that, but there's something, there's another sound going on. It's a sound that we don't necessarily hear with our ears, but it's because it's like um, a good example is if you have a frequency playing, like you have an alarm that has a beep and it just is a tone going off all day. And I don't know, you listen to that infinitely for a while it's eventually going to deafen that tone you won't ever hear it anymore okay mm. so let's think of it that way we've we've been since we've been born there's been a hum that we've been listening to so we can't associate that from it's never been turned off essentially now mm. it's been altered and we can get into that but that's kind of altered by our own mechanical means by our own frequencies that we're emitting on a daily basis and that comes from all kinds of stuff but so let's start with what I'm talking about. That hum is that hum is what's, uh, was found by this guy named uh, Schumann back in the day. It's called the Schumann resonance. And what it is, it's the uh, if, if you were to take like a, a, a pattern of the earth, it has a cycle and it's like 7.8 cycles or something like that per second. It creates a hertz. That's that's the measurement of hertz frequency. They they, they figured out that that resonance right there um, correlates to basically what the pyramids the pyramids were built um, with the understanding of the Schumann resonance. That's basically the best way to put it. They knew the resonance allows you to know where the nodal points of the planet are. So where the where the points of harmony, um, where wave points actually completely nullify each other. So you'll have your your vortex points, your nodal points. This is happening in a webs like structure, uh, and it's geometric shaped around the globe. The Schumann resonance is how we've measured that. And you can almost measure it in a cycle because, you know, we're spinning, okay? So anytime, anything with rotation essentially is giving off a frequency and a hum as well. So we can just go into everything, basically everything is humming. And we're all, you know, nothing's actually sitting still, including the table and the things that were around. It's all, it's all kind of like that. But back into the initial uh, Schumann resonance. So that frequency right there is a natural frequency. From there, somewhere in the ancient times, they derived the solfeggio frequencies, and they only developed them through voice and through chanting. And they were certain tones and hums that they were figured out that were resonant to the body's natural connections that are in tune or in harmony with the Schumann resonance. So the Earth's frequency in our heart have a harmonic frequency. So if I was to play them on my piano up here, the note that I would play on the earth is a very low bass note. And the note I would play from the heart vibration is a, is a higher note. And those two notes are going to sound good in a song together. They're not going to mm-hmm. be out of key, essentially. Let's just put it, put it in a simple way. Um, Cause so that's basically what the, and, and then the, the, you know, ancient Hindus or, you know, who are, you know, yogis and stuff like whoever developed yoga in the initial, that's what they were in tune with. And they were trying to keep the body tuned with these chakra systems. And they were doing that through all kinds of things. It wasn't just stretching and movements. There was chanting and there was things. Um, a lot of times there were, that's where the, you go into some of those places and they'll have those bowls and those things and that you, you, you do the stick and yeah. it makes those, those are samples. tuned to a lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. They have, I've seen tuning forks that are tuned to what are called angelic frequencies. You see all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, what is this all based on? Starts with that Schumann resonance. That's like the basic points. That's our earth. That's our reference point to this whole web of frequency that our entire universe is made of. 
So if our entire universe, this is just getting into my theory behind it. So this is some of my theory, in my opinion, if the entire universe is made of these different harmonic frequencies. So there is a, a rhyme or reason to this chaos. And it's going to be repetitive in that format to go from every level, from the macro to the micro. So our own thoughts are going to affect those frequencies, our own voice, things that we sound are going to affect those frequencies. And therefore, you know, again, open us up to the basically infinite possibilities of what there is in the universe. Wow. That's so interesting. Just to get a little hippie, hippie dippy here. Like I, I haven't even been trained or educated on it, but I have just found that I sometimes in meditation, like I will just start, like, I, I believe it's called toning. I've never been educated on it, but it just like comes out of me. It's like, I just feel like I should, mm-hmm. I just feel like I should like kind of like loudly hum these different yeah. notes <laughs> and I just roll with yeah. it. And I've heard, yeah. you know, that it can help with the biggest yeah. nerve and all that stuff. So I just kind of roll with it, but it's interesting, right? It's yeah. interesting. That, it that's is very interesting. interesting. Yeah, and I love what you're talking about because we hear kind of in new age spiritual teaching, like tapping into different frequencies. Like if you want to be at this level in life, you got to like get into the energy or tap into that frequency, but you're taking this on like a much (laughs) universal, literally scale, which is super interesting. And um, how it coincides with my, with tunings and my music where that comes into play. And and let's fast forward to modern times. Again, we're going back to just ancient, you know, let's get into modern times. Um, Our, any band you're listening to on the radio right now, let's take a modern rock band is the easiest way to put it. Their guitars are tuned in different, you know, um, usually we're, we're an E standard and that's the note. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the frequency. There's an actual frequency tuning. So if you had several instruments and we want to use a guitar tuner or a digital tuner or anything of that nature, we want to all be in the same reference. So if one guy's tuned, you know, tuning an A string and I'm tuning an E string, when we play an A and E together, those are, those are, uh, those are harmonic with each other. That should sound good. Now, if he's got a, he adjusts his tuning for an E, but it's a little bit off the E and this guy adjusts it the other direction from the A, even though it's those notes that should be harmonic, they're going to be dissonant. They're not going to mm-hmm. sound good. So there, there has to be a reference pitch that started all the way back um, when instruments were made of wood alone and we were using our ears and we didn't have a, yeah. a digital phone to just tap into a little thing and tuner and all that stuff. So with that being the case, um, instruments varied. I mean, they used, they did use pitchforks and things. That's how that, that's actually where that came from. <laughs> they would use a tuning fork to tune in. Those were tuned different by the way, than what we're, that's what I'm going to get into, but then our modern tuning, <laughs> you grab a pitchfork or a tuning fork. I'm calling a pitchfork. Um, a tuning fork and tap it from Beethoven's time, or let's go back Mozart, where really far back, that's a different C note. That's a different E note that we're tuning a piano or a guitar to now. And there's a reason for that. And I'm about to get into it. Um, but so basically that's, that's, that's the reference. We have this digital thing we, or this, you know, standard number that we want to tune one of our strings to. And then from there, we can just use that to tune the whole other thing. So every other note's going to be all, you know, in that, Mm-hmm. okay it's 440 hertz for and that's for an a so a 440 a if i tune my guitar to a 440 a and then my bass to a 440 a and then i just turn a keyboard on from roland you know like i use let's you know i and i just press the a it should play it it's already there 440 a that, that's the tuning it comes in when i hit it on my string as long as i got that's where we're at so the band gets together with a simple on switch and a quick, you know, adjust of the thing, we are in tune. And now we can start playing any key we want. D, E, C, doesn't matter. We're going to play songs. That's where you hear an infinite variety of music that is on the radio right now. Here's the problem that I found in it. Oh, I shouldn't call it a problem because I love modern music. You know, I love all music. Um, but it, it's something changed in that frequency is it never was 440 before that. There was a 442 that was used and that has to do with brass instruments. Hmm. Um, and there is, um, I found a simple 1% adjustment that puts a, uh, C. So, well, let, let me just start with where, where, where it's going from. So let's take a piano and tune it, turn it on. It's in 440 based a, and that's a standard tuning. This model fact was, was standardized in Europe by Hitler in America by Rockefeller. 
Okay. Those are the people that standardize this 440 tuning. All right. Let me get into what that means. From C to C on a scale, I'm going to grab right in the middle and hit C5. All right. Let's hit that something around there, I think, a little higher up. Um, right around that hertz, we're hitting a frequency. Um, and it's just what's called sense. And it's one hundredth adjustments in frequency that you can adjust any, any good keyboard to or auto tunes or any of those things on a, on a software program, you can make adjustments, very small detail. The human ear doesn't pick up till the average person ain't going to catch till about 50 hertz. Wow. Oh, wow. So we're talking, you can get into the one hundredths. So we're going digital or digits yeah, yeah. at a time that no, no ear can hear. Um, so when you go at the, you know, there's a variation of that. That's about a 1% variation that I figured out that 440 drops. Now the C that you're hitting hits, I think it is 517. I think the number is 517 Hertz. That's a C that you're hitting in the middle of a keyboard and standard tuning. Okay. okay. The, um, you can look up, uh, 528 Hertz, look that number up. Anybody out there, look up 528 Hertz and you'll see what, what the heck that is. And that is unavailable. I'm giving out, this is a massive secret to all my music. Um, this is unavailable in the tuning of 440. You have to make an adjustment to reach it. Um, that is because, so when I go adjust the tuning that I use, the 1% adjustment, when I hit that C, I'm hitting a 528 hertz C. You adjust it back down, it's 5.7. So normal, it's a 5.17 hertz C. That is not audible to the ear, but I can hear a difference um, because a good musician can hear within 20 or less hertz. Um, but on top of that, and I've had this um, like uh, additional ears on it, a Nashville um, engineer, um, he, he can tell the difference between, we did a, and then we had a piano tuner. So a, a professional piano tuner and a Nashville engineer, I had them tune a piano. And in the process, they thought it was found it interesting why I, you know, I explained it. So they tried a experiment where the guy played a sequence little small classical piece, you know, a few measures real quick, recorded it, tuned the piano, recorded the same thing. And then, you know, blind listen back. And there is an audible difference. And it has to do with the articulation of the notes, believe it or not. The, the difference between um, each note played, you know, dun, 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 you can hear the separation better as the notes are changing by a slight on the frequency. And on a guitar, you can hear an after pitch that's a very high frequency and it comes off one of the resonant strings. So that's where I know it. I can hear the difference after playing. I've been playing in this tuning for over uh, probably five years now that I've actually, I play everything. And I even, the, the, so the song she was referring to, I did a cover of Tom Petty learning to fly and I put it on YouTube and you can check that out. I threw some you know, stuff on it's there. It's great that, guys. Yeah, it, That's awesome. in that key of C. So I, I, I tuned it to that. that. So everything's in that reference pitch tuning. So, so why are you like tuning? That, why are you tuning to that? Fill us in. Oh, okay. So when, when, when that note's played, it's resonant with your heart chakra. Mm. That's love. That's the energy of love. It's resonant awesome. with the blade of grass, the color green, and the sun. The sun gives off of that resonance as well. That's where it comes from. The sun is actually the, the I guess if you want to say what's causing all these resonances is basically the sun. That's probably our, you know, our foundation note, our key. That's the key we're in. And everything else is harmonic. And since we're on the planet Earth, that becomes like our song. That becomes like our key, you know. Yeah. So we, even though we're the sun's in this key, we're in a harmonic of it. And then we kind of have our jam. The other planets around us are definitely in harmony with us. Otherwise, we wouldn't exist. And that's clearly what's happening as far as and no matter what view or model you take it in the 3D, 2D plane, doesn't matter how you view things. It, uh, there's a harmonic resonance between waves in general. Um, and wow. again, the certain spots, they will cancel. And we get certain spots, they will become harmonic um significance to that have as have you ever seen and anybody in the audience think to yourself have you ever heard of cymatics or watch somebody take salt and put it on a vibrating plate and just tune it to different things if you look up youtube videos type mm -hmm. in cymatics c-y-m-a-t-i-c-s um, i feel like i've seen like dirt at like children's museums or sand uh, <laughs> yeah dr <laughs> dr morimoto was his name or something like that he did the the water experiments where he froze water do you, are you familiar with that? The guy who did that so. Japanese so. uh, doctor who froze water um, with intent. So he took a, he took a bottle of water or a sample. I don't know if it's a bottle, a sample of water. Okay. And he, um, 
He put one in the, the free before he put it in the freezer. He imparted vibration to it. He said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Yeah. In. And then he gets another one and he says, you know, I love you and puts in there. He says, another one says, I hate you. Left that in there. But no, it puts like, you know, um, he said something else that was like kind of like a neutral statement, like I wish you well or something like that. It was interesting. Like you, you, you if you look it up, um, when he pulled the water out, he got under a microscope and they made different, um, I guess, the, to describe it to an audio listener, it's like snowflake like yeah. that it freezes in a crystal pattern like a snowflake. The one that he said thank you is actually a, a, a popular picture you can just immediately find on the internet. It looks like perfect uh, hexagons and um, in a perfect snowflake. And the one that, you know, he said, I hate you was uh, dissonant. It looked very, or just looked uh, chaotic. It looked scrambled. Um, and, yeah, um, and there was a different picture for I love you. And there was a different shape for whatever the other one was that so and he did multiple experiments with this so and he froze the intent of the vibration into that and that water responded that so water's the you know infinite or whatever you call it the uh universal solvent so it's you know mm. also kind of a little bit of there's something more to water but we're not gonna get in that but um essentially so the the cymatic plate let's get back into that this is an easier way to describe with a tuning difference um if you look these up some guys vibrating salt to a frequency. So he just dumps pile of salt to pile. He tunes it and he starts turning like that, you know, mm -hmm. as he's tuning, it starts to turn into shapes. It'll start making a shape kind of like, let's just say it starts making like a star pattern. Okay. Um, when he gets to a certain point, you can start to see the star developing. And then when he gets to a certain note, it will like lock in there's full lines that are drawing a star. And then if he tunes it to different ones, it'll draw different pictures, hexagons, and it draws pentagons. And it draws the uh, standard platonic solids, actually, are all the, all the figures, fractal shapes of the platonic solids. Mm -hmm. No matter what pitch you tune, and this is a frequency sweeper attached to a vibrating plate, a really simple tool with just some straight Morton salt on there. It's just shaking, and, it, and it's changing that pitch. So um, the detail that I figured out is, there's an area right before the, the picture changes and it's chaotic. Yeah. And then you keep going and then it looks perfect. Wow. Uh, the adjustment of that I make makes that C note perfect. The picture you yeah. adjust it down. It's the chaotic shape. That's not quite there. It's foggy. Mm -hmm. That's where the notes we're hitting in our modern day music standard tuning are. So wow. say some, so this is, and this is why I think the purpose is, and it might be a little woo for people, but say someone is because I look at music as a channeling. So I'm not coming up with this myself. If I, yeah. I there's just, there's just no way I'd come up with something different. I listen to all kinds of things. So why am I coming with my music specifically? There is subconscious experiences that's going to play in, but then there's my outward and my also some kind of, um, you know, somewhere else channel. And that's like, a, I call it like a shamanic thing um and so say in the process of writing a song anyone out there from the producers who do little wayne to a country guy to me any you know buddy out there um say just again just so happened to channel a good chord sequence that was a shamanic chant from the ancient times it's just like it just came mm -hmm. in that's the melody mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. and most likely a lot of the pop songs are probably this we probably heard these before Somebody played, you know, the, the little, you know, sound, you know, that we hear in these pop musics on probably a flute, you know, 10,000 years ago, for all we know. This isn't uh, new. That's just in my opinion, but I do think other musicians, people that are creators will understand where I'm coming from with that. It's, yeah. This is information that we're now channeling. We're putting it together. So back to what I was saying, so say somebody's on to something and they come up with one of them ancient chants. Well, if, if we're tuning slightly cloudy, then we're going to hear the cloudy version of that. And we're going to like it because it sounds great. sounds familiar. Imagine mm -hmm. if they had just adjusted their tuning to where they're hitting those exactly notes. Now we're actually hitting green, blue, orange. You're lighting up three of the human that's listening to the chakras. Wow. Each time a bass note drops, that's each time the cool. chorus hits, you get the chills ever listening to a song. Have you ever had sure. that? Sure, for sure. That, I, that, that's, that's, that's happening with the cloudy tuning imagine if everyone could just make the adjustment then hmm. some people have and the name might be familiar michael jackson 
used to tune his music in this way. Wow, that's amazing. And, uh, John Lennon did a few tracks as well, playing with these tunings. Wow. Playing with relative tunings. Yeah, adjustments. <laughs> Thanks for explaining all that. And this is yeah. so fascinating to me. And I, I love your analogy with the, the salt on the vibrational yeah. plate, right? Because it helps yeah, us helps understand us. how much frequency uh, impacts like our structure, you know, and even from yep. the health coaching perspective, like, I, I mean, it, it's gotten to the point now where I'm just like, oh, okay. So you have pain there. You have troubles there. Like what happened to you? And like, what, how are you protecting that area or sending hate to that area? Like, I mean, it really is so correlated. It's unbelievable. Right. Like, and you know, you're talking about thoughts and, um, how yeah. much, it, you know, it, it, it impacts things. And I have to say, like, I, I'm like, if you guys don't like woo, you, you know, might not want to listen to it. You might consider it woo. I just feel like you just gave a very scientific explanation that is like uncomfortable oh, yeah. maybe it, for it, some people. And for <laughs> scientific purposes, it does go. I, I have numbers that go to the 100th place on my, uh, right. on my tunings, um, you know, and, and, and it comes into development with that harmony and then just being able with modern technology, being able to hit it perfect. And let me throw some out there to anybody who, you know, look at this as a positive thing. Uh, uh, theory in general because of the fact of one percent adjustment is all it took to make that salt perfect the shape right. perfect one percent adjustment is all it took to make the note on my piano resonant with the key and the, everything in natural and earth one percent adjustment in your thought one percent adjustment in your frequency is all it's going to take to make you perfect that's a message that i'm actually trying to put out wow. there that wow. that that's the true thing and then listen to the, and, uh, something interesting about the whole population as a whole, we're constantly putting our thoughts out there. Um, think of the, the percentage of the population. 1% of our population agrees on something. Everyone all of a sudden starts agreeing on it. Hence why some of these, what we call wacky things that are occurring in the media, how could someone like this? How, what the heck's going on? The reason behind that is probably because just a small percentage have jumped on board and it's starting to have a fallout effect and affect everybody. So that's another thing. Everyone be careful with your thoughts. Your thoughts are directing traffic for everyone. If we all think one way, we can all become our best selves. If we're all channeling that, that frequency. And again, that's when I'm going to lean back a little bit on 75 hard. If you're not quite there yet, this is something that's going to get you on another frequency. It's going to get you on another mission. You're going to tune out from the dissonance, the stuff that's causing your salt picture to not quite be there. The media's dissonance. The, you know, all those interactions, the bad interactions on social media, all that stuff's happening. If you cut that out and replace it with good meals, great outdoor workouts, reading mm -hmm. books like Think and Grow Rich, which is one I read on it, you know, twice during my journey. Like I read, you know, read through some really good stuff. You're now on a totally different frequency and a different level. If everyone out there, 1% of our whole population was rocking 75 hard, I think we're going to move in a different direction. We're going to start pushing things in a different direction. This is some I, you know, so that's where it coincides all with my music. Fitness and lifestyle, spirituality, it's all tone. It's, we're, we're, it's a song. So for me, you know, as a musician and a producer, it all just, you know, it comes together. Yeah, man. I, it's funny. Like, I uh, just this morning in my meditation, it was a lot, a lot of these messages coming in about like how, just how much coherence w w that those, that was like my message today that I don't always get messages. Sometimes awesome. I do. And it was all about coherence today. Like it, it, in myself, like truly, like even like with this table and this house and that outside and all humans and all beings, like there's, there is, I, I don't know. I, I feel like there is, um, we're, uh, just beginning to understand how important this is, you know? And when I think of life, uh, it, it, like it, think of paradise, think that we are all at like, like earth has turned into like paradise, right? Like yes. everyone is so happy and healthy. Uh, yes. That's coherence. Yes. Like that's probably what you imagine mm -hmm. is like coherence, you know? So I, I really I like to start my thought experiments, honestly. And I like to think of, I like to go back in time so far that there's no point of reference of anything. No point of reference of an Indian tribe, no point of reference to a cell phone, no, no point of reference to anything. And you got sun, moon, stars floating around you and, you know, you're breathing air and you're seeing animals and what's happening here. What's happening in the mind, right? You know, there's still something there's, there's, there's profound thought that exists. You know, we, uh, you never want to take for granted that this modern times that we're just the end all be all of thought. A lot of our yeah. thoughts are based on each other. A lot of our thoughts are echo chambers anymore. A lot of our thoughts are based on what other people are thinking. Realistically, 
they might have been more plugged in in that pre everything time because they could just look mm-hmm. at the sky and then and enjoy that coherence and enjoy that um that message yep that's what i was getting was that like you know how sometimes people say like oh i was uh a, we were sent on this planet and we got like no freaking guidebook no instructions mm-hmm. and like really what i was hearing this morning was just like yeah, no, you, 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 you have so much access to like source information, but you're so mm-hmm. cut off from it. And, you know, it, even along the lines of what you're saying, like, I think, gosh, how much longer could we live if we expected to, and we were in this coherence? Like, I wonder, you know, you hear these biblical stories or whatever of like living 400 years. I don't know if any of that's mm-hmm. true, but oh, I yeah. do feel like a lot of for sure. A lot of the reality we experience is because we believe it. We believe that that's how it's going to be. We, be, you know, and we have these things that obstruct us and keep us like separated. And that's really interesting what you were saying about the <laughs> Hitler and Rockefeller thing. I'm gonna have to nerd out with you later about that because now I'm all curious, but. Oh yeah. That, that's where, you know, that's how, you know, you, you start going into certain research, um, you know, any, everything that I, that I've ever come up with on research has come from pyramids. It's, and I always, if someone was to say, you know, where do I start getting, uh, just look up a video on the great pyramids, or if you can get a chance, hop, go there. I've never been there, but just take a look at those things. I mean, I can see it in the, in a video or in a picture. I mean, we ain't building that still to this day. We're not building that somebody else did it. Somebody did it so long ago that we can't put our finger on it and all history is um, embellished that involves it. Um, the only things that are true is it is the, I, it's like something like 99 point something accurate percentage with the, what's called the axis Mundi, which is the access, the axis of the, all of land mass on the earth. So if you were to put Pangea back together, what they say is when all land was one and you were to draw a crosshair on that sucker dead center, and then split us back up, that crosshair still exists right where the pyramids are. They knew exactly where those were. And that has to do with some type of uh, additional consideration of, again, that energy web that does exist. Um, and it's referenceable in our more modern times by a guy named Ed Lead Skolnan. And he did this down in Florida. It's in America, right here in Florida. He built what's called Coral Castle. And he utilized, he said he utilized the same principles in which the pyramids are built. And he's one man that weighed 130 pounds, that was 60 years old that was able to um, put up monoliths that weighed over five tons and a door that weighed over nine tons that can be spun by a child. Um, and he did this wow. on his own. Um, so clearly there was some wow. other form of technology involved. This is where, you know, if you look it up, it'll start going into alien tech, starts going into every which way. But realistically, if he said he understood the math, it, it, you can get into a mathematical thing. And that's when you start getting into numbers again. So that's where, again, like, this all becomes scientific. It leaves the yeah. world enters the world of numbers when you start getting into prime quadrivalence. It's very mathematical, but it's uh, that's what that guy figured out. He figured out the, the some of the prime numbers. And again, now we're talking numbers are just a way to put a some put a handle on them frequencies again. So wow, you know, and it's interesting too because you know, speaking of being tuned in to similar frequencies, like they had pyramids in Russia and uh, you know where South America is. There were there are pyramids all over, and it's I think um, for me. Oh yeah. When I spend time in nature at night, (laughs) every time I do that. And I, especially if you have a good view of the stars, like I'm like, Holy cow. We are so disconnected from reality. Like this is a huge part of our reality is seeing, you know, during COVID I was walking around this lake by my house at nighttime. And so I, it's like, I knew exactly what time I didn't even need. It's like, felt like I didn't even need a clock anymore because I was so in tune with like where, when, what, about what time the sun goes down and when this, like I could see where the moon was and know that it's like nine 15, you know, like that's how in tune. Cause I was out there every night for like three months straight, you know? And I was like, Oh, Venus is okay. So, Oh, so Venus goes on that trajectory. Oh, got it. Okay. That's why I don't see it all the time. Like I learned so much just from being out there, you know, and we're so disconnected. And then, you know, talk about the coherence of like vibrations being put out on the earth. It's super fascinating talk. I love this shit. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. If you guys don't love like this kind of stuff, I think it is such a cool, interesting, um, exploratory look at, um, the, I guess the combination of science and spirituality, you know, is definitely something I'm interested in, but it's like I, the more and more I go into spiritual talk, the more and more I'm like, oh, it's, it feels almost like scientific explorations than it does spiritual explorations, you know, because 
at least you seem like the same kind of person as me where we, we want some sort of rationale. You know, if somebody says like, hey, like you can float. I'm like, okay, like, well, prove it or <laughs> give yeah. me some sort of explanation for that. I'm not going to do how to do this. And then, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, be, I'll be doing that as well. And then we'll get, you know, let's get on. Yeah. I, yeah, it, 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 I always have been investigative minded. That's, yeah. that's you got to be inquisitive um, in this day and age, especially, especially with the information just in general out there. So you have to be inquisitive minded to really kind of move mm -hmm. forward and even catch on to this stuff. But it's there. It's real. It's not. This isn't this isn't something I even invented or had anything to yeah. really do with other than I'm, I'm perpetuating it and I'm tuning my music yeah. Um, yeah. in these in these aspects, because in this regard, it, again, the math and things goes beyond me, goes beyond us is where we're at now you know, where it even came from, because it's like, where did music come from? Why, why am I making songs? I guess that's, uh, you know, why maybe um, if anybody's wondering out there, how I ever could have come up with this and got on this path. It's like, when I asked myself one day, why am I making, why am I hearing music? Why am I writing wow. down music? Um, and why am I hearing it the way I write music? And it's different with a lot of musicians. There's a lot of, you know, the, the whole saying of a lot of ways to make an omelet or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get a lot of ways to go about it. But the way I go about it is I typically make the sound of the song first. The words don't come first. The tones come first. Even the tones of the words come first. So that made me question myself, well, why am I hearing sounds of a song? Is there words that go in it? And then that's when I'm like, oh yeah, there is. Cause now I'm hearing that when I'm saying this, I'm saying shine on, shine, the song shine on, you know, and bam, there's a song I made mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. It's not only, it, it's like the thought was there. Where are the words that go with this vibration? Wow. So it's like, there's, it's coming from somewhere else and I'm decoding yeah. it. So what we are, we're, you know, um, we're able, we're antennas. So we're receiving messages. What are we decoding in our computerist like minds? Our minds are still more advanced than the computers right now. Um, and I don't know why we're trying to advance computers of, uh, further than our own brains. We should spend more time advancing our brains Oof, um, to the next level. And then, you know, utilizing computer as a great tool that we can command, not uh, let's make it think for us. We don't, wow. we think we have the ability. It's already been there. Clearly the pyramids were built. Now, if we find out one day they were built by a society based on technology, then you know, heck, that's what, that's mm -hmm. what it was. But I don't think so. I think there is a lot, um, in my opinion, it's magnetism. Um, there's a lot more to the laws of magnetism that escape our general understanding to where they affects our principles of gravity, um, speed of light and all that stuff. Uh, the mag magnetism, you know, could essentially be uh, an explanation for almost all of it because it's going to mm -hmm. affect harmony and spin because you have the spin and velocity. But why is why? Because one is one negatively charged while one's positively charged. Where is this charge coming from? Yeah. Um, you know, and I, yeah. I, I love your mind because you you're one of those people that has a, 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 a simultaneously a scientific mind and an artist artistic mind at the same time. It's cool. I, I, I always appreciate that. in people, I've known several people like you and it's like, it's cool. Cause it, it, uh, leads to a lot of curiosity of like how these things are contributing to each other, you know? So yeah, that's it. That's what yeah. it's all about. It's a relationships, you know, it, yeah. Einstein, Einstein's, you know, the law of relativity was, was every, I mean, he realized that it's all, it's all relative. It's all relative yeah. to the theory that he creates. It's all relative to the next theory and principle that someone else creates. That's why they're careful with what, uh, carefully changing what the kids get taught. If you notice, math is even taught different. All that stuff. Why is this? Because they're understanding that we have more power. I don't know why we're why we're getting dumbed down again, but uh, a lot of it is you know it's a power grab, obviously, because we have the power to expand our minds to you know levels of Einstein, levels of Tesla, like. These guys are doing this well before us without phones and with yeah. great computers and Zoom and three screens and all this stuff going on. They have none of this, you know, and they're mm -hmm. knocking it out. Mozart was making music without um, recording it first and listening back. I mean, you guys, we got to, you know, understand that there's there's something great with human potential, human potential yeah. power. And I think that um, music getting so modernized, I think for me, it was important to add something from that ancient world into the modern day. 
And I incorporate modern day sounds and cool tech stuff. And uh, um, we're working on some really cool instrumental stuff, actually, guys. Uh, we're going to be releasing this next year of 2022. There are little instrumental shorts. We're going to have YouTube videos and art. Nice. There's going to be visual art and music combined. Um, I have experimental tunings galore. Some are tuned to the chakras. Some are just tuned off the general tuning. Just, you know, we're making different vibrations and things. Um, and that's something why I, you know, jumped into decimal places is because um, just to touch on it, not all my music is tuned to the heart chakra. There's, there's seven, you know, main chakras. Yeah. And I've tuned different songs to different ones. So if you go to our Spotify and you listen through our seven songs, you're going to touch on at least, I think there's five chakras involved in that seven set that's on there. What is your Spotify called? Um, it's from Orion, like the from star Orion. constellation. Nice. And then you might, you guys might see where the reference point of Orion is, uh, you know, because the, if you ever heard the pyramids alignment with Orion. Nice. And Orion's also star nebula, uh, M42. It's always been my number, but M42 nebula is a star nursery. So most likely something, um, we, we actually maybe just comprised of all the elements essentially that were uh, coalesced there at one point, expanded out and made us because that's it's, it's before us in time. It's chronological time technically. So when we look up at it, you know, it's already, it's that, you know, we're coming from that area. So from Orion. Love uh, it. Figured that kind of comes into play. I love it. And I know my, I know my spiritual peeps are geeking out hard on this, on this episode, <laughs> especially us, the science, science, spiritual nerds. It's, it's so fascinating. It's so fun to explore. And, um, I, I, I commend you for being so curious, you know, like, I love that. I, I also am a very curious mind and it's cool what we can come on to. Um, I will go ahead and, and, and wrap up. I, but I want to let people know where they can find, all your music, um, make sure we link yeah. that appropriately. So Spotify is where, where do yeah. you recommend people Spotify find your music? Main, main go, but, uh, at Brad from Orion on Instagram at Brad from Orion, um, has a link tree. And on oh. that, you're going to find everything. My YouTube from Orion music from Orion on Twitch. Um, and you'll find mainly though, Spotify from Orion. And we have a podcast from Orion on there as well. And that's good. So I get into deeper, I'll take one of my songs on the podcast from Orion. You can look that up on Spotify. It's just called podcast from Orion. Um, and what I do is I'll take a song and I'll explain, Oh, Hey, it's in this key. And I use this tuning nice. and it's attuned to this chakra. And this is what we did. And this is who we work with. And this is, so I do a little behind the song. Cool. Um, I have some that are just like kind of messages. I have like little things, this is kind of a fun, um, I guess, uh, you know, uh, subsequent kind of stuff you can follow up on, you know, yeah. just extra, extra details on music that's on the podcast from Orion. So you can go there. All that stuff's on the link tree. It's at Brad from Orion on Instagram. Um, the YouTube video from Orion, you can go and watch that's learning to fly Tom Petty featuring 75 hard journey. And then I also, uh, do another podcast called the zero percent podcast. And uh, I've interviewed Tara on that because she is totally a member of the 0%, which is someone who's so unique and bold and lives their, their reality based on their goals, their destiny, seizes that opportunity, and then uses that to pivot and spread that to others. So that's, the, that's someone in the 0%. If, you find, if you're listening to this and you think, hey, I'm in the 0%, this is what I do, um, send me an email at 0% podcast at Gmail or at Brad from Orion at Gmail. And um, maybe I can interview you on my podcast and see that you're a member of our 0% like Tara is as well. So that's all yeah. my plugs for you. And as well, First Form, <laughs> that's a company. They stand on all the same values I do. The, the creator of 75 Heart is the, is the founder and um, CEO of First Form. Um, so basically, you know, for the top health quality standards and some great product, check it out at Brad or from Orion on the link tree, I'll send you right to that link and I can get you free shipping if you guys use that link. So hit that Instagram at Brad from Orion, follow me, subscribe on everything, go through my links, check it all out. And thanks a lot for listening guys. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brad. Freaking rad. It's cool stuff. I'm, I'm going to have to check out your podcast with the music and hear kind of a little bit. I, I want to hear that behind the scenes of what you're doing, what you're tuning into, what you're playing around with there. Cause it's kind of like, I don't even, I don't want to call it bio, like biohacking. It's like hacking. It's like a spiritual hacking. It's, it's, it's yeah. creative right. exploration of music in a way that I haven't heard anybody else doing. And it's really freaking cool. And it's speaking well, my language. So I'll check that out and we'll link, we'll link to your Instagram. And so that you guys can find that link tree directly from there. And awesome. yeah, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. Yeah. And thanks a lot for having me. It was great.